Hey guys, uh, we're going to start this video two tabling at 25 no limit on full tilt. Just happened to pick up aces our very first hand. Um, for the most part, we're going to teach you how to beat these games by playing a very tight, aggressive style of playing poker. It's the only way to beat the micro stakes, really. And the first thing you want to do is be playing break even poker and, um, you know, turning your profit with uh, rake back and bonuses. Um, here, if the action is checked to us um, on the aces hand, we're going to go ahead and bet pot. If they happen to have king 10 or a set of sevens, then so be it. Um, and we just go ahead and take it down as we should. Uh, as you can see, I've got two tables popping up so we can get a wide range of hands. 4-3, we fold in early position, even in a multi-way pot. It's just way too speculative of a hand. Um, and Ace-8 suited, we will raise. Uh, I like to raise four times, blind on blind. I believe that raising three times just invites a call way too often. And... Um, I don't have a read on this opponent on whether he completes very often or not. So we're going to go ahead and fire out a continuation bet just to see where he's at. Um, if he calls, we're pretty much going to be done with the hand. I normally would prefer to bet a little more, um, but I just felt like that bet would do, uh, would give me the information I need. So um, I'm going to be pausing the video from time to time um, just to you know, edit out some of the more boring spots and situations. Playing our super tight tie style and building a bankroll, you know, if it's checked to us here with 9-3 offsuit, we're not going to steal the blinds. We're just going to fold. Um, it just makes sense. People call too often and defend their blinds way too often here. Again, a min-raise under the gun. King-10, good multi-way hand. Um, easily dominated, easy fold for us. So, um, queen nine, however, um, is a hand that I would normally raise um, because I feel like an, I can outplay a lot of opponents on flops. But again, to teach you guys how to start beating these multi, you know, these micro stakes, low stakes, no limit ring games, we're just gonna fold it and wait for better hands. Um, we're gonna spend some of our time building our table image so that later on, as we get more comfortable with the game we can start to bluff at more pots and steal more blinds which is crucial to your overall win rate but not that important for our first goal which is literally and I can't say this enough get yourself to the point where you're playing break even poker by playing break even poker you know like I said you're gonna turn a profit with rake back and clearing bonuses um, so that's that's goal number one and I you know I wouldn't venture out of 25 no limit until I was playing consistent break-even poker there um, and then at that point you know if I had the bankroll for it I'd consider moving up to 50 NL or even 100 NL where believe it or not the play is a little more straightforward people fold more often when they should when you take away odds to call um, but at the micro stakes game, you just have to play with the assumption that they're going to call everything you do. So the easy way to turn a profit or play break even or better poker, knowing you have opponents that will call everything you do, is to make sure you have the best of it. And by playing only the best hands in the right position and in certain situations, uh, and, and even more importantly, controlling the pot size to our advantage, uh, you will win at this level and, and, and it's proven time and time again. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Don't play weak aces. Let them go. Um, we're not even looking to play a hand like ace three off uh, in the hijack or cutoff chair. There's rare situations if the table conditions um, seem to be easy to steal blinds at, then I, I would probably open raise 4x or 3x uh, to steal the blinds, but until, un unless we know we're at a table where that's possible, we have to operate under the assumption, again, that players are going to call everything you do. So we're going to make sure that when they call, we have the better hand or the better draw 
uh, or you know better pa odds. We're going to take away their odds and make sure that when they call, they're going to be calling poorly. They're going to be making a poor choice when they call us. Eight five under the gun is the easy fold. We're going to fold. 90% or even more of our hands from under the gun. King 5 suited in the big blind. Um, it's a hand we'd like to see a flop for, but if it's raised, obviously we're going to fold it. It's an easy fold. Um, if the small blind completes, um, you know, we could raise, but again, I'd just rather see the flop and count on my ability to outplay them. Um, you know, if I wasn't teaching this super nitty style, I would always want to see a raise there if the small blind completed. But for this lesson and this series, we're not going to do that. We're going to focus on having better spots. We're even going to walk the small blind when it's folded to us, except for when we have some decent hands, at least until we know that this player... Toby Toby is capable of folding his big blind. For now, we operate assuming that he will always defend as most micro stakes players do. Here with 4 4 in the button, um, it's an easy fold of the Jack 3. With 4 4 in the button, um, we're going to fold. Although I'd like to set mine, I would consider set mining if one or more of these players had called, if Jermaine, Gio, or Yohim had called. But since nobody did, the value isn't there for us to set mine. Uh, so it's an easy fold. We hadn't invested any money into the pot voluntarily, nor had we posted a blind. So even though the implied odds may be great, at this level we're just trying to build our bankroll. We're trying to play break-even tight poker turn our profit with rake back and um, you know make folds in speculative situations like that so I'll be back in a few seconds here I gotta take a quick break but I'll be back um, as some hands come up okay I'm back we have king nine in the button uh, it's gonna be an easy fold because the pot was raised in front of us we don't want to call here and hit a nine because um, we're not sure what you know if we're going to be ahead or not. We also don't want to call and hit a king here because we are we could very well be dominated. And even more so, we don't want to hit 10 jack queen for a straight, which would make the second nuts. Although that might sound great, he may very well have ace king for Broadway, which, you know, it, it's just an easy spot to be dominated in, so it makes it an easy fold. Um, queen three suited is always going to be a fold um, for this strategy at this level. We're never going to play any high-low suited except the occasional and rare um, ace-x suited. And we're only going to play ones that connect ace-10 and up um, and ace-5 and down. Uh, we want the potential to make a straight with our flush to even consider playing those hands. And again, even calling with those is going to be purely situational. So um, I'll be back in a few seconds here when a hand comes up. Um, so we'll talk to you in a few. Okay, we have 8-7 in the cutoff chair. Um, I could consider uh, raising a hand like this if it was suited and unopened in front of us. The fact that it's been raised makes it an easy fold. At this super tight nitty style, I wouldn't even raise as it suited um, unless the table conditions dictated it. Pair of jacks, we're going to play aggressively. We're going to make it 4x to go in an unopened pot. Um, we'll evaluate our actions on what to do after the flop if we're called. 